Hello everyone, I am going to show you a very quick tutorial on how to create these puddles within both Photoshop and Unreal Engine. We can see that these are decals, so we can move these around our scene and it will interact with the light. So as I move my camera angle, we can see the light is reflecting on that surface. Very cool. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into Photoshop. I've downloaded a concrete texture, which I'm going to use for my puddle texture. And I'm going to add a separate layer on top. And I've just duplicated these um, rocky textures directly on top, just to give it a little bit of grit. And you can either lower the opacity, okay, or you can go to something like a multiply, because I want to make this just a little bit darker. And now we've added a little bit of grain to our image. So without and with okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer i'm going to go to edit and fill just to fill this with a blank white layer and i need to create these puddles so i'm going to select the filter option and then go to render and clouds and make sure you've got the uh, black in the background and then white in the foreground and it's going to generate the clouds directly on top of this layer. We need to then press Control, Alt, and F. And that's going to create more clouds. Okay, so let's keep pressing it until we get a result we like. That's not too bad. So I'm then going to go to uh, Levels, Adjustments, and Curves. And just make this a little bit darker. So I'm going to bring this down. In fact, I'm going to press Control Alt and F again. And yeah, that one's a bit better. There was a little bit too much going on there. So back to image adjustments and curves and then bring this down. And you can also select a point on this curve to then increase the brightness. And then select OK. We need to remove the white from the image. So I'm going to double click here directly on top of this layer. If it's going to load, my computer's been quite slow today. And that's going to bring up the layer style. And on the blend if, I'm going to drop this white node down. I can then hold Alt and select this little tab to split it. And then blend this in a little bit more. And select OK. Now if I was going to tile this, I'd need to make sure that this was a tileable cloud. Uh, which I'll show you later. But for now, I'm just going to delete everything on this outside. Okay, so I'm just selecting around all of the outside edges. And then just delete them. Okay, and you can then go back into this and start painting into it if you need to. So we can select a brush. I'm going to just select the black material, the black texture, sorry, and then just paint into this just to join these gaps up a little bit. I select my chalk brush. Okay, so that's going to be my puddle. Uh, we might need, want to just add a little bit more texture here. So I'm going to double click back on my layer. And I want the texture behind just to come through slightly. So I'm going to go back to the underlying layer and bring this forward. Now 
Okay, so I didn't want it to be as wet. I wanted to also just show a little bit of the texture underneath. It's looking pretty good. And we can also duplicate this and we can change the hue and saturation. So you might not want it, want it to be totally black. So we can go to the colorize and then increase here. So just on the edges, I might make this just slightly darker. Okay, so without and with. And we can also press Control, Alt, Shift and E to flatten the entire thing. And then this way we can go to our hue and saturation and change the hue if we need to. We can also go to image adjustments and color balance. And then we can color balance this image. So I've just made it a little bit warmer. And that is about it for our texture. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And then go to Photoshop back to JPEG. And I'm going to save this. Let's create a new folder. So this one's going to be our um, base texture. And I'll save that. So we now need to make our roughness pass. So I'm going to remove this flattened layer and I'm going to remove all of these layers underneath. And I'm just going to keep that white layer. Okay, so I can kind of see here that some of this needs to be erased. It's a hard edge there, so I'm just going to erase that. Like so. a little bit better and then go to file save as and then save this as a JPEG and save this as our roughness okay and then I'm going to go back to that flattened layer on top and go to filter 3d and then normal map So that's going to generate our normal map. If you want the uh, puddles to extrude away from this, then when it loads, and we can see here that the puddles will be risen, or we can invert the height, and then the ground is also going to be risen. Okay, so we can experiment with that. I'm going to click OK without the invert. Go to File, Save As, and save this as a JPEG. This one is our normal. Then we're going to go back into Unreal Engine. And in this case, I'm just going to um, select a cube and just drag that into the scene. Okay, so I'll apply the texture to this flattened cube and I'll create my new materials here. So we can right click in Unreal Engine, create a new folder. I'll just name this cube for now. And then we need to drag in our new materials. I also need to save a version without any of these effects. So I'm just going to save this and this one. So file save as, again, a JPEG. And then I'll drag all of these into Unreal Engine. So once that's loaded, we're going to load the base material onto the cube. 
And then we're going to create another material and create a decal of that. That way we can just move this material directly on top. Um, you can just create the uh, just one material if you are only going to add one puddle to the scene. And in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. But if you've got a decal and you need to move this around, then I'll also show you how we can do that. So if I just drag this basic directly onto our cube, then it's going to create a material of that. It's called base mat here. That's just going to bake that material. Okay, there we go. So there's our material baked onto the cube. And I'm going to create a new material on top. So I'm going to select material. I'll call this uh, mat new for now. You should probably call it put on material. Call it something where you're actually going to remember where it is and what it's called. So let's just drag this up and I'm going to add this base texture to my base color. So I've dragged that in and the RGB will connect to base color. We then need to select the roughness. I'm going to drag that into the scene and add that to, you got it, roughness. And then I'm going to drag in the normal map. And you can experiment with and without the normal map and I'll show you with and without. But let's just add the RGB to normal and then click apply and save. So we'll just let that load. Okay, always make sure that you save your textures before you close this down. So that's now saved. And I can now drag and drop this into our scene. Ooh. And now we can see this water texture on our material. And the normal maps also come through as well. So we can see a slight texture there. And we can see that this is now interacting with the light. Okay, pretty cool. Now if I go back to this texture, then I can delete this normal and then click apply and save. And then we get this effect. So this is as a material, but if we wanted this as a decal, then we need to just change one setting. So we need to go back into our materials we select this material node and then go to our material and go to deferred decal and then select blend mode as translucent and then apply and save this. So I'm going to drag on that base material again. If it will let me, let's just select my cube. Uh, I might just delete this. Ah. Right, so it's applied that as a decal. I'm just going to create a new cube here just so we can see this. So new cube, I'm just going to drag this out. And let's add this base material to it. And then let's add this new material that we've made. Okay, so because this is a decal, we can scale this down and we can place it anywhere within the scene. So if I wanted it on the wall, then I would have to rotate this, hold J, rotate this, and now we can see it on the wall. But because we've got that brick texture, we would have to uh, change that within Photoshop, but we can see that effect there. So I'm just going to undo that. But we can see that it's actually reflecting the light because we've added that roughness map. 
Very cool. Let's just select both of these and move this towards the orange light so we can see this a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so that's how we can create a decal and very easily create these puddles. Now, I've done this very quickly. We can see that these puddles are, um, have hard lines. If you want them to make them softer, you just go back into Photoshop and paint these in properly. You could use custom brushes or you can use photos online. For now, I've just used that cloud option and then set that to a decal. So the same way if I was to create a roughness material. So I've done the same here. But this time I've also added an opaque mask. So we'll just go on to here. It's the exact same process. Okay, but instead of adding a normal map or setting it to roughness, I've inverted that mask. Okay, so anything that's black is going to be removed. Anything that's white is going to stay there. And then I've got my material. So this is my material. It's a leaked material. And then this is my mask. You can do that easily within Photoshop. You just need to set this to black and white and then invert this. And if I just duplicate this, then I can also move this one into the scene. So same process. I've set this as a decal. I can just overlay this. I'll just stretch this out. Yes, as an example, we can have two different decals directly on top of each other and get some really cool results. So now we've got the contrast between the matte material and the glossiness that's underneath. If you want to create a tiled material, I'm just going to go back to this material here. Close all of this down. Let's just make sure these are deleted. I'm going to merge this one down. If you want to tile this, you can go to Filter, Other, and Offset. And then just make sure that these are directly in the center on the horizontal and vertical line. So you'll need to play around with these sliders and get it directly in the middle. That looks OK. And then I'll need to move this one up. OK, so make sure it's in the center, roughly in the center. And then you'll need to paint the cell. So there's two ways. You could use the spot healing brush tool depending on your texture and then just spot heal the center. And it does an okay job, but we can still see that we've got four different tiled textures here. So I'm gonna go into my clone stamp tool, select this texture and then paint it out this way. So we need to try and get rid of all of these darker marks and just blend in some of these lighter sections. Okay, and then once you're happy with that, I'm just going to remove some of that dark area. Uh, go to Filter, Other, and Offset again, so it brings it back to its original state. And if you see any other lines, then you might need to edit them out. But now this is tileable. I would recommend that you stay away from these kind of dark areas here, because when you duplicate these textures, you'll see that darkness over and over and over again. So you might want to just edit that out. Again, you could use the Spot Healing Brush tool, or you could use the Clone Stamp tool, and then just paint these out. Just so you don't have a consistent pattern. This is very random. You can go back to Filter, and then Offset, just to make sure that that's looking okay. That looks fine to me. And then just go back to it again. And that is your tile texture. So you do the exact same thing with the puddled version. If you were going to tile this puddle across the entire scene. I wouldn't recommend that you, do, that you do that because again, it's going to look like you've duplicated it. For now, we've just created a, a decal that will be applied to the material. Okay, I hope that helped and I will see you in the next tutorial. Take care, goodbye.